Yeah, so he had a view, as you just described, of Congress, um, well, of the president as being uh, restricted in its power. But his view also was every branch is restricted in its power. So um, he would stay within his bounds, Congress should stay within its bounds, and of course the judiciary within its, its particular bounds. Um, and Taft, unlike others, was very, very uh, committed to trying to stay within those boundaries. Um, he was somebody who just simply would not um, do anything that he thought was political for the sake of being political. So he didn't like going out and shaking hands. He didn't like giving speeches. He didn't do, like doing a lot of things that we think of presidents liking to do. Those are going to hurt him politically. Uh, substantively, he's actually going to get a lot done. Um, he gets a variety of laws through, um, again, broadening more or less the extent to which the federal government is regulating the economy. Uh, so the foundations really sort of are almost modern economic regulations are all being laid at this time. Um, he's going to completely revolutionize, revolutionize the judiciary through six appointments to the Supreme Court, which is remarkable. One term, six appointments. Um, that's incredible. Um, and he's very deliberate about what all those are. One of his deliberations was picking old guys so that he could succeed right. them and become right. Chief Justice. Right. Yeah, exactly. So he said the hardest thing he ever had to do was to pick somebody to be Chief Justice because he's, as he's doing it, he's thinking, that's my job. You know, well, how could I give this to somebody else? So he picks somebody named Edward Douglas White to become Chief Justice. White had been an Associate Justice appointed by Cleveland. Um, and I think a pretty popular person among the other justices. But Taft wasn't stupid. And Taft does note along the way that White was older. Um, so later, when Taft is not president, but Harding is president, um, turns out that uh, White dies. And who's first in line knocking on the door of Harding but Taft, saying, oh, gee, it's too bad White's dead, but you know, I'm available. Yeah. He cast far fewer vetoes than Roosevelt and actually wrote his vetoes like judicial opinions, saying, I dissent. Give us some more contrast between Taft's view of executive power and Roosevelt's. Yes. Yeah, so Roosevelt was, of course, as the documentary, among other things, would show, is an exuberant personality. You know, somebody who was very much um, uh, committed to trying to do whatever he thought was proper and right as president. So he wasn't constrained by anything. The office didn't, did not constrain him. The Constitution did, did not constrain him. The only thing Roosevelt thought constrained him was whether or not the, pop, the popular vote or the people would support it. If he thought he had popular support, Roosevelt would do it. He'd go that direction. So this is Teddy Roosevelt, um, energetic, accomplished, um, and unbounded, and almost the exact opposite of William Howard Taft. You know, Taft thinks he's completely constrained by law, particularly by the Constitution. Taft also thinks he's not um, somebody like Roosevelt, who had kind of a steward theory of the presidency, which is, I'll just take it wherever I think it ought to go. Taft, views instead, no, I'm going to just simply stay within my bounds like a car, keep it in its lane, and we're going to be very careful about you know, how fast we go and, and where we go. 